examination papers yet. I need to breathe before <laughs> start grading. Hopefully, I can give a score later. Would you like to see the solution? Would you like to see the solution? Yes? Okay. I will put it up on board. No? You don't want to know? Yeah, at least for my problem, I will put it up on board, maybe on 11th floor. You can just take a look. Maybe before the score is announced, you see, at least you still remember. Okay? And you all know, right, which problem I designed. One? No. <laughs> problem one is too simple, I think. Very, very simple, just like in example. And pr problem three is mathematical intensive. That's not my style. All right. So, we are going to finish chapter 10 probably today. Okay? And then we have chapter 11 and chapter 14 later. Now, shall we start? All right. The example for today would be what we call a false flow. Okay? There is a pipe, vertical pipe, that you have water flowing down along the pipe. And outside, If the fluid coming in, into the pipe here has temperature of T0, and then the temperature outside is T1. Suppose water come in at T0, flow pass through the pipe, along the pipe here, temperature outside is T1. Okay, so if you look into the problem only, what happens here? Just phenomena, what kind of phenomena is takes place here? If T1 is maybe higher than T0, what happens? At the end, at the end here, liquid should be heated up, right? The temperature, the average temperature of liquid here and liquid there would not be the same, okay? But there should be conduction and there should be convection as well. Can you describe the direction of both convection and conduction? Can you? Is there any conduction? In a system like this, is there conduction? Yes. In which direction? Suppose T T1 is greater than T0. There should be conduction in R, right? In R direction. So, if uh, or to be easy, if to be easy, not to be confused, let let T1 is lower than T0. 
So you have hot water coming down during the way, that's a cooling, okay? So that means there'll be heat flux along our direction. If you set up like this, the heat flux would go along plus R direction. All right? Now, is there any convection? There will be at least convection for sure in Z direction. Okay? So convection should go along Z direction. If you have hot water, then there will be a flow of heat along Z direction here, but in reverse, right? Because if you look into the first plane at Z equal to zero, everything is uniform at Z greater than zero. Inside, supposed to be hotter than outside. The temperature outside is dropped, is cooler. So there will be a conduction from inside to outside. But if you look from over top here and the position here at the same inside position, temperature here is higher than there, right? So what would happen? There's supposed to be a convective flow as well as conductive flow, right? Now, at the same time, this problem, you have momentum transport and energy transport at the same time. Which one you should solve first? Someone would say momentum. Why? Or under, which, under what kind of assumption? Same thing as we discussed earlier. As long as you can assume density and viscosity to be roughly constant, does not change with respect to temperature. You can treat the whole flow just like isothermal system. In that case, velocity profile is supposed to be something like this. This is a flow in circular pipe. In order to obtain this um, flow, the shale balance or the the shell that we use is supposed to look something like this, okay? The velocity is function of R only. You have only VZ, and VC is function of R only. So therefore, your shell of momentum balance can start from top Z equal to zero down to Z equal to L and change only in radius, all right? How about the shell for energy balance? What does it look like? For sure, we have heat transfer in our direction. Or you have temperature gradient or temperature change in our direction. So therefore, our direction of your shell, or your shell is supposed to have thick of thickness of delta R, right? How about in Z direction? Is there any temperature change in Z direction? Yes. So the shell thickness in Z direction is supposed to be delta Z as well. So what does it look like? There'll be a ring, right? So the ring here is supposed to look something like this. with the thickness in this direction to be delta R and the height here to be delta Z. If you look into a shell itself, now we will have heat flux in our direction. Okay? 
let's say this is ER. It's coming in from the center. Going out, outside, on the sideway of the shell. At the same time, you have flux in Z direction. And every time we set up a shell balance, we normally set up the direction of the flux to be along with direction of the axis. So here will be E in Z direction. Right? So if you set up a shell balance, input term, you can set up two sides. The first side would be on the sideway of the shell. If you look into the sideway, that means you look into the red flux, input should equal to flux in R direction, getting in at R, multiplied by the area perpendicular to the flux. What is the area? What is the area here? 2 pi r, delta z, right? 2 pi r delta z. That's in. For output, it would be r plus delta r, 2 pi r plus delta r, Z, delta Z, okay? These two terms are similar. And also we can set it up into the same form. For instance, 2 pi delta Z can be taken outside. Inside, you take R and ER here. If you reduce into this form, the output form can be written in the same manner, only at R plus delta R. And as you may notice, every time we have something in R direction, we can put in into this form almost always. Okay? Now this is the red vector. For blue one, we look into top bottom direction. The input is what? It should be flux in Z direction at Z, right? Multiplied by the area. Now for the area in top bottom side, it is this area. What is that area? How can you describe it mathematically? 2 pi r, delta r. Just like you just spread it out into a rectangular shell, okay? For output, <coughs> everything would be the same except coordinate here would be z plus delta z. 